You really choose some exotic places for your holidays, Mr. Martian. My wife and I'd never dream of going to Venezuela. I can't help your lack of imagination. Lack of funds, more like. Would have thought that would have been a problem for a bankrupt like you, too. But you had plenty of money on you when we picked you up. Which I'd like returned as soon as possible so I can continue my holiday in peace. I think I'd like to know where you got it from first. Look, I'll be honest with you, Inspector. Be a good start. I was brought up in the world of high finance, where ten grand is just small change. Yeah, but you got your fingers burned. You don't handle that sort of money now. I've still got friends in finance who sympathise with my bad luck. One of them got a good bonus this year and decided to make me a small gift. We could all do with friends like that. And being a bankrupt, I couldn't put it in my bank account. But you could tell me who this mysterious benefactor was. <laughs> No, I'm afraid not. I promise to be discreet about it. I wouldn't want to embarrass him. Frankly, Mr. Marchin, I don't believe a word of it. And I don't think a jury would either. Now, you'd better come up with something a bit more convincing. Hi. Tea? Yeah, and I need a favour. Right, well, I'm always happy to help him out. What are you after? A copy of the fireworks good? Uh, but this is serious. I'll chuck me out and I need somewhere to stay. Well, if I hear of anywhere, I'll let you know. Well, I thought I could uh, move into the cottage for a while. Oh, Terry, we're all crowded out, mate. I can kip anywhere. I, I could just be one of the lads, you know, all mucking in together. Uh, well, I'll have to go and have a word with the others. I'll get you tea. Well, you've got yourself in a real mess this time, haven't you? Oh, don't rub it in better. Still. I suppose I'm better off than Steve and Kim. <laughs> Sounds like they'll be moving into a prison cell soon. Oh, it's not that serious, is it? No, it's just Chris Tate stirring up trouble for him again. Oh, the way I heard it, Cathy's come round. Well, we all know that. She started to name names. No chance. We're overcrowded already. There's, there's not enough room as it is. Well, all right. Are you going to tell him or shall I? Look, we're understaffed and Steve hasn't turned up for work. I don't have time to listen to your bleating. Yeah, well, that's what I'm here for. I could help. Seth taught me all about gamekeeping. I could cover for him till he gets back. Give me one good reason why I should ever employ you again. Because I've changed. Oh. Look, I'm going to have responsibilities soon. And I need wages and I'm prepared to work for them. Well, I found out why Steve hasn't turned up for work this morning. No doubt you had a hand in it. I don't know what you're talking about. He and Kim have been arrested. What? So, it looks like you must have finally convinced the inspector to take your theory seriously. Well, nothing to do with me, but I'm glad to see that justice is done at last. <coughs> um, what about this job, then? Hmm? Oh, I normally wouldn't touch your family with a barge pole, but since this is a day for miracles, I'll think about it. So let's just concentrate on the night of the theft. Where do you say you were? At home. With friends who can witness it. Now the trouble is, I've got a witness who says you were somewhere else. Cathy Glover's ready to identify you as the man who knocked her down. So now you know the score, you can start telling me the truth. I've changed my mind. I do want a solicitor. All right, Mr. Marchin, if that's the way you want it. Interview terminated at 12.11. Take him down to the cells. Something I can do for you, Eric? It's more what I can do for you. You see, I've been taking legal advice over my uh, injuries. I spoke with Laura Johnson and she believes I have a strong case. You wouldn't stand a chance in court, old boy. You mean you're going to sue me? Uh, I'm not a vindictive man, Alan. We've been friends a long time. So I'd prefer to sort this out um, amicably. What did you have in mind? Out of court settlement, say, um, 500 pounds. 500 pounds? Stay like robbery. I am not prepared to haggle over this. Costs a lot more if we went to court, especially if the 
subject of after hours drinking came up. Could be even more serious. <laughs> That's rich. Coming from you. Oh. You still have a license to lose. Yes. Yes, I suppose I have no choice. Good. Well, I'm glad you could see it my way. I'll expect your check within the uh, week. What a crook. Well, you wouldn't have stood a chance if it hadn't been for Terry's stupidity. He's the one I blame. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting so long, Mrs. Marshall. By the way, James seems to be quite happy. Uh, milk and sugar? Oh, thanks. Perhaps you could also tell me what's going on. We're trying to establish exactly what happened on the night of the third. No! <clears throat> you stated that your husband went upstairs to make some business call. How long was he out of the room for? About half an hour, I think. I couldn't say exactly. Is it important? Yes, it might be. The problem is, Steve's been getting quite touchy lately about being interrupted while he's making his business calls. So I, I've got used to leaving him alone up there. So there was no contact between you while he was out of the room? No. I was talking to Zoe. Uh, yes, that's confirmed by her statement. But neither of you could actually be sure that he was upstairs the whole time. <laughs> Where else could he have been? You're not suggesting he sneaked out and went up to Home Farm? I'm not suggesting anything, Mrs. Marchant. I'm just trying to establish the facts. Well, I, I suppose he would have had time. It's too awful to think about. I mean, leaving poor Cathy like that and then coming back as if nothing happened? You don't really think Steve's capable of something like that? Well, you tell me, Mrs. Marchant. You're married to him. Excuse me. I hope this hasn't been an ordeal for you, Mrs. Martin. Something wrong? Not exactly, but um, Inspector Spaulding's just phoned. Asked if he could go down the police station as soon as possible. I've just finished my rounds. Oh, he seemed to think it was urgent. Probably Chris stirring things up again. Uh, well, you'll have to rearrange my appointments for this afternoon. How's the wedding preparations? <sighs> Ready to go. Well, come inside and tell me all. Aren't you busy? I've got to get these appointments sorted away, Taylor. OK. And your needs is a lot more interesting. <sighs> Uncle Zach's already ringing round the relatives with invitations. <laughs> well, don't you think you ought to find a husband first? It's already sorted. Well, don't leave me in suspense. He's a lucky man. Then lab samples come through from... Came to see you the other night. You were busy. Still am. Yeah, mate. You're a mate. What the hell's going on with Mandy? You are charged that you, on Tuesday 15 September, at the Home Farm Stud, stole a stallion Orsino to the value of £300,000 belonging to Home Farm Stud. Contrary to Section 1, Subsection 1 of the Theft Act 1968, you are further charged that you, on the same date, drove a motor car on Congleton Road dangerously. I am required to give you written notice detailing these offences. And to remind you that you are still under caution. You do not have to say anything but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which later you will rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. My client has nothing to add to his original statement. Thank you. This interview terminated at 12.45. We'll talk again later. So, what's the score? What am I likely to get? A year or two for the theft. About the same for causing injury by dangerous driving. You mean it could send me away for four years? The sentence would be concurrent. With good behaviour, you could be out in a year or so. Your best chance is to cooperate with the police as much as you can. 
That should keep the sentence to the minimum. Where you been? Huh? Looking for work. Well, there's plenty to do here. No, I mean proper work. Paid work. I'll be a married man soon, aren't I? I'll have responsibilities. Look, you thick plank. Nothing's gonna change except we'll get our house back. Do we have to explain it all to you again? No! I understand. Good. But if you're feeling that keen, you can go and clean that engine down for me. I'm a very busy woman, Inspector. I've told you everything I know. I'm getting rather fed up of going over it again and again. Particularly since your case doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Oh, on the contrary, Miss Tate, we're making real progress now Cathy Glover's regained consciousness. Her testimony has enabled us to arrest Stephen Marchant. Cathy must have made a mistake. He couldn't have been involved. I was with Kim and Steve all that evening. Not quite. Now, you've stated that Mr Marchant went upstairs to make some calls. Did you or Mrs Marchant have any contact with him during that time? <sighs> no. So you can't be sure that he was in the house? I saw him go upstairs, that's all. Would you say the Marchants had a happy marriage? It had a pretty disastrous start, as you know. He certainly managed to hide his business troubles from her then. Would you say things were more open between them now? I don't know. I used to think that uh, Kim was too shrewd, too tough to let anyone do something like that to her, but um, she's changed. In spite of everything, she's stuck by him. I guess she must be in love with him. And knowing that, he might have taken the opportunity to plan something else behind her back? It's possible. I still can't see that either of them would be involved in something like this. Like you said, he's fooled a lot of people before. Thank you for your help, Miss Tate. Come on, Mandy. You've got to tell me who it is. I don't know what you're getting so excited about. It's not important. It's a marriage of convenience that doesn't mean anything. Are you sure? Well, you were going to marry Chris Tate. You didn't even like him. I had reasons. If you're going to marry someone you don't love, they've got to be stinking rich or drop-dead gorgeous. Which is yours? Well, neither of them describe him. Well, he's got to have some ink. Fast car, great sense of humour. Not even warm so far. Oh, I give up. Who is it? Butch. <laughs> nice one, man, but seriously, who is it? I'm not kidding, Kel. I'm marrying Butch. You are out of your mind. I don't know what you're making all the fuss about. It's not a proper marriage, so it doesn't even matter. Well, it's Butch I'm worried about. Remember how he was with Sophie? That was really creepy. Well, after the hiding my uncle's hat give him, I think that taught him a lesson. I'm not so sure. He's always fancied your man. You told me he tried it on with you as soon as you came to the village. That well, doesn't mean anything. But you try it on with anyone he thought he had half a chance with. I can handle him. Well, it's still a big step. Marriage. Even if it is just for money. I don't want to see you getting hurt. Well, it's nice to know you care, Kel. But my mind's made up and nothing's going to stop me. Uh, could you put this up in the window, please? Accommodation wanted by clean, quiet bachelor. Mm. Sounds a bit boring to be one of your mates, Tell. It's me. Hey. Yeah, I'll stop this out because of fireworks. It was an accident, though. Yeah. Change his mind when he's calmed down a bit. I'll have a word with him if you like. Now nah, I'd save your breath. It means it this time. What about your job? Gone. Now he fired me. He'll make some kind of settlement over mistaken wool pack, but well, that's not going to last forever. Nobody's going to give us another pub after this. So you're out of work and on the streets? Yeah. It's about the size of it. So uh, 
How much do I owe you for the ad? Nothing. You can stay here until you get back on your feet. It's all right, isn't it, Vic? Oh, don't worry. We're past all that now, aren't we? Well, of course we are. Oh, fine. But he's sleeping on the sofa. Thanks, mate. I've just phoned the police station. Kim and Steve are still there, so I guess there must be some new evidence. Not hard to work out where it came from now. Kathy's regained consciousness. Things are really looking up. Yeah, well, I'm glad Kathy's on the mend too. But I still find it hard to believe that Kim or Steve had anything to do with it. You wouldn't, if you knew her as well as I do. That woman's capable of anything. I can't believe you hear so much. As far as I'm concerned, she's already committed murder. My father would be alive now if it wasn't for her. But it looks like justice is finally going to catch up on her. And I intend to save her every moment. Where are you going now? Trying to set up a public execution? There's someone I want to share all this with. Hi, Ned. Hiya. Where's Dad? He's finishing off on the top field. I think your mum's still out shopping. Good. Because it was you wanted to see. I was hoping you could give me a few more boxing tips. <gasps> oh, oh, sorry, Robert. You'll only get me into trouble. You know how your dad feels. Yeah, but you ain't gonna know about it if he's still busy. I don't know. Oh, please. I've been getting a lot of hassle from this kid at school. I don't want to defend myself. I suppose it can't do any harm. I mean, whatever he says, the only way to deal with bullies is to stand up to them. It's not easy when they flatten you. You've got to keep your guard up like I showed you. OK, try and catch them unawares, off balance. How do you do that? Look, try this one. Put your hands up. What you do is you, you faint with the left and as they duck away, wait while they come forward, then crack them with the right, all right? Cool. That way they're moving on the blow and it doubles the impact. Cool. Come on, then, you try it. All right, faint with the left. That's it. You faint with the left. Good one. And again. There's a visitor for you, Tom. So worried about you. Oh, things aren't so bad. At least I've got a roof over my head, thanks to Viv. Oh, you're welcome. But uh, I'd better be getting back to the shop. I feel terrible about what's happened to you. I'll survive. I oh, know, but you and Grandad have been friends for years. As soon as I turn up, you start falling out. It's not your fault. I told Grandad about the lock in. Well, I had to. Eric Pollard was going to tell on us otherwise. I didn't mean for it to turn out like this. Like I say, you've got now to feel guilty about. But you know I'll do anything I can to help. Is Cousin Jethro still in Parkhurst? How should I know? I'm just wondering whether she'd invite him to the wedding or not. Don't think she'd invite anybody to the wedding. I wish there wasn't going to be a wedding. We've been through all this, Lisa. Mandy brought the idea to us. So she must be willing. And Butch is dead keen. A bit too keen, if you ask me. It's just a business arrangement. And if he starts forgetting that, I've got my own ways of reminding him. Uh. I don't know why you women always have to complicate things. The way I see it, it's dead simple. They get married. We get the cheque, we get the house back, and we all live happily ever after. I wish I could believe you, but I reckon nothing's that simple. Not where people's feelings are concerned. <sighs> Martin's still sticking to his story? Mm. He'll crack. We've got Cathy Glover's ID, and he was called to the airport with 10,000 quid. He'll need more than a smart lawyer to wriggle out of this, and he knows it. Got to admit, he's got some bottle. Pulling a job like this while the vicar thinks you're upstairs. Yeah. He can't a fortune out of people on his last scam. Including his wife. You think she knew what he was up to this time? That's the big question. Certainly I haven't got enough to charge her. What's your gut feeling? Everyone says she's a tough businesswoman, but from what I've seen, she's soft where he's concerned. Now, he put one over on her before. I'd say he came back for a second helping. She's clean. Ah. 
Remember what I showed you? Okay, fake with the left, cross with the right. That's the way we'll make a fight of you yet. And keep on your toes, keep moving, all right? Don't stand flat-footed as you make yourself an easy target. It's easy with a punch bag. It's different when someone's rushing you. Well, that's better for you, not them. Playground bullies are all the same. They're all aggression and no... no science. You keep a cool head, you'll always come out on top. Hey, your mum and dad are here. Right, I'll put this away. You go back to the farmhouse and not a word about what's been going on, OK? Right. Give us five. <laughs> Waited a long time for this, Dad. Now you can rest in peace. Kim has finally got what she deserves. Wherever you are, I hope you can see it when they lock her away. Have you been following me? Not exactly. I was on my way into Houghton when I saw your car parked by the cemetery. I had to come. I owe it to him. This obsession with Kim isn't doing you any good, you know. Maybe you're right. It's been like a millstone round my neck. I've always known that she'd left my father to... to die. Just... couldn't prove it, that's all. But now, she's going to pay. Can I see my husband now? I'm afraid not. He's been charged. He'll be held here until he can be taken down to the magistrate's court for a preliminary hearing. Will he get bail? That's up to the magistrate, but we'll be opposing it. In the meantime, you'll be advised of visiting times as soon as possible. I should go home and get some rest. You've had a long, tiring day. You mean I'm free to go? Of course. You'll have to stay within the area. I'll be needing to talk to you quite a lot while we're preparing the case. You're expecting me to give evidence against Steve? I'm expecting you to tell the truth, Mrs Marchant. It's all I ask of any witness. Now, Miss Tate's waiting to give you a lift home. She's out there now with James. Thank you, Inspector. I've strapped James in. Thanks, Zoe. Steve's been charged. Yes, I know. Kim, I'm so sorry. It must have come as such a shock to you. It was certainly a shock to me. Zoe, do you think he did it? We have to face facts. Kathy's identified him as the man that ran her over. How could I love someone who left Kathy to die? I mean, how could I be living with him? when he was planning all this and not realise. How could you possibly have known that he would do something like this? Enough people warned me what he was like. Yes, and you stood by him. I admire you for that. You can't let him drag you down again. They'll put him away for a long time. He deserved it. And you deserve to be free of him. Come on, take you home. <laughs> <laughs> 